Tate watu Wako mwamba Zinala ni Ile mekeze Iyo tuning in to the Liwe Hour. Call your friends to tune in and be blessed by this life-changing message. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 from the New King James Version of the Bible. The Bible says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We thank you that you shook the earth that was there before. You will shake this one also. We thank you that only what cannot be shaken is what will remain. So Lord, as we teach your word, we thank you for revelation knowledge. Receive all the honor and glory. Let your word heal and deliver from destruction. We pray this with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's welcome all those that have joined us via live streaming on social media platforms and television. Come on, give them a big leeway welcome. Can we hear you, church? Hallelujah. We welcome you to the Liwe Hour. If you're in Lusaka, in the Charleston area, Charleston Obama Road, near Nkoloma Stadium, you'll find a church with a billboard. Liwe welcomes you. Every Sunday, 8.30 and 10.30, and Wednesday, 18 hours, you will be blessed. Amen. We are in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. Paul is making a conclusion. He says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I want to talk to you about steadfastness. Amen. You see, if it's a year of steadfastness, we need to understand how to be steadfast. How do we live it out? How do we know whether we are, you know, living steadfastly or not? You see, there is something that cripples believers. And that's when we decide to become religious. We do things without understanding why we are doing them. So when we're talking about steadfastness, what are we talking about? You see, we are talking about you as a believer having a backbone. Come on, people. Having principles. Steadfastness does not mean you won't have challenges in life. Look at your neighbor and tell them, my dear, life happens. Amen. Things happen. Anyone can quit. But Paul is saying, be steadfast. Now, let me, give, let me give you the meaning of being steadfast. We are looking at it in the connotation of permanence. When you are steadfast, you are permanent. You begin to be established. Things begin to unfold in your life. Come on, people. The next meaning of the word steadfast is maturity. You mature. Maturity is being consistent. Maturity is the ability to see the furthest ahead. To be steadfast, steadily means to be resolute. The Bible says he set his face towards Samaria. Hallelujah. So, towards Jerusalem, you are resolute. You are not wishy-washy. Listen, life is not a popularity contest. You know, they came to the Lord. 
John 7, his brothers came and said, you want to be a public figure? Go to the feast. He says, for you any time is okay. My time has not yet come. The same Samaria, where he had that revival with that woman at the well, when he set his face toward Jerusalem, Samaria refused to receive him because he was going to Jerusalem. But what we are saying is when you are steadfast, you are resolute. Hallelujah. The next meaning of the word steadfast is unwavering. It's part of your default setting. You are unwavering. You know, there are times when people come and then they want to convince you into something. I've had people come to me, they talk to me about it. Then when I refuse, they try and go and see mama. And then they find out that, that we are two very strong-willed, stubborn people that agree to disagree agreeably and we both refuse. Hallelujah. Are you, together? Are you here, people of God? We are talking about being unwavering. Whether you are popular or not, you stand on the principles of the word of God. Now the question comes, where do we get the boldness to declare that this is a year of steadfastness. What is the basis of our being steadfast? Look at it. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren. Hallelujah. The first basis for your steadfastness this year is the hereafter. You see, the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15 talks about resurrection. Our faith goes beyond the grave. Are you here, beloved of God? We are the only ones who have a savior who rose from the dead and is still doing today what he did before. Hallelujah. There is an assurance of eternal life. Can I help you, beloved of God? We won't all be the same in heaven. What you get out of heaven is determined by what you do here on earth in the kingdom of God. I know we like to be polite at funerals and tell lies. Religious exaggeration. What our beloved has not finished here, he'll finish there. He won't. Tell your neighbor, he won't. Because the Bible says in the grave where they are going, they, we are going, there's no planning. Come on, people. So you need to understand that you need to be about your heavenly father's business. Hallelujah. We are his ambassadors. The Lord says occupy or do business until he comes. You can go through life spiritually bankrupt. Mm -hmm. Come on. Pre-independence, everyone said, we'll all be managers. Really? Independence came, people started choosing companies. Qualifications. This tooth I lost, it was during the freedom struggle. That is not a managerial qualification, losing teeth. Hello, people. Now, let me ask you a question. On earth right now, are we all the same? Do we have the same social status? Do we live in the same social neighborhood? Do we have the same net worth? Now, if there are different categories here, what more that right? We read Revelation. He keeps saying that the one who overcomes, I will give this to them. I will give this to them. The Bible describes the Christian life as a marathon. Run with perseverance. The race set before you, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Philippians 2.13 says, It's God at work in us, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Amen. So even when things don't seem to be working, you say, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to witness. I don't want to sing. I don't want to preach anymore. It will rise on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Because God deposited in you. Come on, people. Steadfastness is there because of the hereafter. Hallelujah. There is a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. Amen. So that is why we have this basis of being firm. 
We are not talking about just a fairy tale pie in the sky. We are talking about the reality of Christ Jesus. And we are living in the days of the outpouring of the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Steadfastness changes your temperament from fearful to bold. Come on, people. So the first basis of our steadfastness as believers is the hereafter. There is a heaven to gain. Hallelujah. May you aspire that when you meet your creator, may he say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Amen. The second basis of being steadfast in this year, beloved, in your life. He says, therefore, my beloved brethren, it is your heritage. You see, brethren means brothers. So he's talking about family. You need to understand your spiritual heritage. You need to know we have an inheritance in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He's talking to family. Paul is telling them that you may have many instructors, but I am your father in Christ Jesus. I've begotten you through the gospel. And he's telling them no matter what you pass through, realize that you are beloved of God. Hallelujah. Raise your hand and say, my God loves me. No matter what. Oh, talk to me somebody. Heritage is our basis for steadfastness. We belong to the Lord. The greater one resides in us. Hallelujah. There's a third one. A third basis. Our handiwork. He says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding. Somebody say, always abounding. Hallelujah. Always abounding. When you look at the Greek meaning of abounding, it means super abounding. It means going the extra mile above everything and anything. So you need to realize that God has wired us to be busy in his kingdom. Hello? Come on. You know, we need to be free from exaggeration. These are days of load shedding. The people who complain the most don't have never been bought electricity in their life. Hey, Achilamo. Sure. Unagulapo ya zingati. Loafers, dependents. Hey, no, no, it's not fair. Oh, it's not fair. But how do you manage to have debt on all networks? <laughs> I was amazed. The time sent money to someone. Said, sent money. At, oh, you should have asked. I asked for what? That account has in Congolese and Genera to chop. I should have given you a number. Mm -mm. Tell your neighbor, Bafe, we know. Always abounding. Hallelujah. You see, the beauty of being a believer is that instead of fishing for fish, you begin to fish for people. When you fish for fish, you take them from life to death. There's a certain man who knocked at our door a long time ago, and he was selling fish. And to show us it was fresh, the fish was gasping. I said, yeah, so ungalote, maloto, straight. <laughs> I told him it's too fresh, brother, too fresh. I feel guilty. This is part of fish napping and killing. Hello. <laughs> but when you fish for people, you take them from death into life. Tell your neighbor, read someone for Jesus. You see the joy that is there. Hallelujah. Everything begins to change. As a young man, many years ago, he stayed with his, his brother-in-law and his sister. The brother-in-law really contributed to the alcohol consumption in this country. He was a guzzler. Believed the wife to perform miracles of making money to bring food when he's not bringing any money. But he came to the house of the Lord. He heard the gospel of Jesus. He got born again. Hallelujah. 
everything changed. Tell your neighbor, everything changed. He even told the brother, you know, he says, yeah, but my money now, it's more. Zapak and drama manje. Hallelujah. Before he passed on to go to glory, he was not only a cell leader in this ministry, later on ahead, he even became a pastor. Hallelujah. Handiwork. Tell your neighbor, abounding. Don't get discouraged when someone you reach backslides. Mm. Have you ever wondered why medical people say this is a medical breakthrough? Maybe in heart transplants. It means up to that point, people were dying. But now they found a formula in which things can work. So people of God, do not relent. Share the gospel. Share with someone what it means to be born again. They may not respond right there, but there will come a time when the seed you've planted is going to germinate. Come on, people. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, it's time for us to be always abounding. Yeah, in season, out of season, talk about Jesus. Hallelujah. Paul and Silas, they were whipped, put in the inner prison. They had all the right to grumble and complain and say, but why is this happening to us? But they sang praises to God. And the prisoners heard them. Hallelujah. And my Bible says at midnight, the world says that's the witching hour with God. It's the miracle hour. God shook that prison to its very foundation. Every chain was open. Every prisoner was free. Every door was open. Not a single prisoner moved. You know, when the power of God comes, everything is suspended. The jailer wanted to kill himself. Paul says, don't worry. We are all here. Hallelujah. Wow. The same man took them home. He was able to, you know, tend to their wounds and everything. And then he asked the question that every human being needs to ask. What shall I do to be saved? And they told him, believe on the Lord Jesus. You and your household, and you'll be saved. May we not get weary of hearing testimonies of salvation, testimonies of healing, testimonies of miracles. Hallelujah! May God help you if you are a believer and you get offended. Someone gets up. You must rejoice. At every testimony. That is authentic. Life changing. Hallelujah. Handiwork. Always abounding. The fourth basis. He says always abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Tell your neighbor serving God is work. Labor. The Bible calls it labor. Hello? Now, notice. The fourth basis is heights. God has got heights that you and I need to ascend to corporately and individually. There are goals. There is a race you need to run. Look at Psalm 18 with me. We're going to read verses 32 to 34 from the New King James Version. He says, it is God who arms me with strength. Tell your neighbor, that's the anointing. Hallelujah. And makes my way perfect. Look at verse 33. He makes my feet like the feet of deer. And sets me on my high places. Everyone say high places. Nobody can ascend your high places on your behalf. Hallelujah. When he talks about feet of a deer, you see the deer, you notice that they, are, they make something like a triangle. The front legs and the back seem to be connected and they are scaling a mountain. Their feet have got things that can hold. 
they don't slide. This is what he's saying. God gives you the capacity to fulfill your assignment. I'm here to remind you that you're your best when you are yourself. Hallelujah. You live out what God has called you to do. Others can inspire you, but be yourself. Be the beautiful you that God has graced this world with. Oh, someone raise your hand and say, I hear you. God makes your feet like the feet of deer and sets you on your high places. Verse 34. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. When God sets you up, he gives you the capacity to remain at that level. Oh, raise your hand and say, that's my God. So you need to set your vision to greater heights. Hallelujah. The year of steadfastness. Let nothing cower you down. Come on, beloved. Now, let me give you the keys. The keys to steadfastness. The keys to accessing the position of steadfastness. That won't shake you. No matter how big the dream is, once you see it, you can have it. Hallelujah. I'm talking about your dream house, your dream car. I'm talking about your dream life. Come on, people. Let's look at the keys. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, the first key to steadfastness is pedigree. You need to understand your spiritual ancestry. You are part of the family. You are in the family of God. Hallelujah. You have been born by his spirit. Talk to me somebody. When you know who you are, you know what you are entitled to. Hallelujah. Are we here people of God? Please don't go around life mediocre and blaming it and telling us that you are suffering for the Lord. The Lord said it is finished. Come on, people. He didn't say I'm finished. He says it is finished. So the first key to steadfastness, you need to remember your heritage. You need to remember what you are entitled to. The prodigal son went off but the Bible says he came to himself and said, how many of my father's hired workers have much more to spare than what I'm undergoing now? He said, I'll go back to my father and I'll say, Father, make me like one of your hired workers. The father reinstated him to his position. Hallelujah. You may be down, but you're not out. Come on, come on, people. Pedigree. You never see a lion cub saying, meow. So, beloved, your DNA is that we are partakers of his divine nature. So, your pedigree is the first key to steadfastness. Therefore, not only says my beloved brethren, hallelujah. The second, be steadfast, immovable. The second key to steadfastness is positioning. You need to know that you are seated at the right hand of the Father in Christ Jesus. Far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named in this world and in the one to come. And he has put all things under our feet, his feet for the church. Hallelujah. Stamp your feet and say positioning. You see, whatever you expect is what you attract. The third key to steadfastness this year and beyond, pace. Always abounding. Put speed to what you are doing. Don't be too slow. Don't be too left behind. Be in sync. Sync with the Lord. Do it quickly. Hallelujah. Always abounding. Look for an opportunity to be a blessing. To bring a smile to someone's face. Come on, people. 
Bless people who have no opportunity to reciprocate. Hallelujah. Put pace and speed when you have opportunity. Hallelujah. The final key, beloved, performance. Knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Sometimes it's not breadth, my dear. It is depth. Are you listening to me? Performance. May your works speak for you. May you ascend to places that others have just dreamt about. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor the ground is crowded. There is room for you at the top. Amen. Hallelujah. May God expose you. May God open and come on things in your situation. Performance. My beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor Raise your hand and say, my labor. You see, we have a way of seeing anointing on other people apart from ourselves. We have a way of seeing people's achievements apart from our own. But the word of God says, your labor in the Lord, your participation, your involvement, hallelujah, in the Lord is never in vain. Amen. God's word has the power to transform you. Your greatest decision is concerning eternity. I invite you to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus. Pray this prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, take my sins away, and make me a child of God. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome into the kingdom of God. Jate watu wako mwamba Zinala nyo ile mekeze kwa 